This is the brand new BMW M135i. And as you might expect, it's been blessed with a whole host of changes. They've overhauled the shape, the look, and the technology. Seems like we're gonna crash into a Peugeot. Case in point, the old M135i used one of these. The new M135i uses one of these. You can use a smartphone to unlock, start, and even share a key with your friends. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. The big news, and we've got to talk about it, is that they've fundamentally changed the way the M135i moves. In other words, the engine mixed air with petrol, made power, and sent that power along a prop shaft to a differential that made only the rear wheel spin. And that was great because it meant you could do burnouts and drifting and donuts and other antisocial things that I definitely have never done if there are any policemen watching this. The new M135i sends power to all four wheels. And on paper, that just, that just sounds boring. What it means is that you can instantly forget about being a hooligan in this car. This has definitely lost some of the more rebellious tendencies that the original M135i had to it. What I mean by that is there's no drama to driving this car. It doesn't matter whether it's wet, dry, whether the traction control is switched on or off. If you floor it, as I'm doing now, it just gets on with business. It just lurches you down the road in a straight line with no fuss whatsoever. There's nothing wrong with that, of course, but it would have been nice to at least have the option of a skid. It would have also been nice to have the option of a manual handbrake like you got in the original car, instead of this electronic handbrake, which well, I'll show you what it does. You pull it and it just brings you to a slow, comfortable, controlled stop. Nobody wants that, do they? If you were expecting a driver's car, this ain't it. Quite the opposite, in fact. They've actually taken a lot of the driving out of your hands with a new system that completely eliminates the need to bother learning how to drive, in reverse at least. So, check this out. You've driven into a car park and you're not very confident when it comes to parking. No problem, you press the P button on the center console and you engage Park Assist. It looks around, scans, finds a parking space, press the P button, it indicates I remove my hands from the steering wheel and my feet from the brakes and the car does the rest. I'm literally doing nothing right now. Looking around, seems like we're gonna crash into a Peugeot. No, it's braked by itself, it's adjusting the steering wheel. I mean, I would have done that in one, to be honest, but it's, it's trying. And then we reverse into the space. And again, no hands, no feet. I could go to sleep right now. Will it stop? Will it stop? Little hesitation. And we're in. So I can go shopping, get my bits and pieces, jump back in the car, and then be on the road. Oh, but what's this? I'm so silly. I've forgotten something at the shop and I forgot to pay attention in the driving lesson where they taught me how to reverse. No problem. Whack it in reverse. Press reversing assistant. Let go of the wheel and the one series does the rest. Automatically remembering exactly where I've come from, steering in reverse and applying the exact opposite motions to get me back into that same parking space in exactly the same way as before. How cool is that? That's progress. Yes, this is a new breed of M135i. It's no longer a wild animal whose primary purpose was to make tires melt. It's changed. And if you're the kind of person who enjoyed the previous car because it was a hooligan amongst hatchbacks, then you might be disappointed. But there are valid reasons why BMW has moved away from handbrakes and burning rubber. Most people who buy a 1 Series simply have other priorities. What most people want is a nice badge attached to a fairly affordable car that delivers practicality and comfort. By removing all the hardware that allows rear-wheel drive and replacing it, in the case of the M135i, with a smaller all-wheel drive system, they've managed to reclaim quite a bit of space for people and things. The boot is now 380 litres, 20 litres bigger than before. That's bigger than what you'd get in a Mercedes A-Class and bigger than you'd get in an Audi A3. Although it's about the same as what you get in a VW Golf. It's also a wider opening, so now it's easier to get bulky items in and out. And now, for the first time ever in a 1 Series, you also get an electric tailgate. Welcome to the 21st century. 
I'll tell you what else you didn't get on the old one series, leg room. This car is a little bit bigger than before, so you now get an inch more leg room and about an inch more headroom. That doesn't sound like an awful lot, but it does go a long way to making the car feel that little bit less claustrophobic and gives you a little bit more room to work with when you're loading in awkward items like children. If you're spending a lot of time back here, then good news, you get not one, but two USB-C ports, so you no longer have to trail a long cable from the front of the car into the rear of the cabin. Up front, this is the best seat in the house, definitely. BMW have really stepped up their interior game recently, so you get a nice cabin with expensive feeling tactile materials that go a long way to reminding you that you've made a wise purchase. All the controls are pretty logical once you wrap your head around them. All these buttons down here relate to your climate control and heated seats. The ones below that are all your media buttons. And below that, on the center console, are all the buttons related to how this car drives. You can control the whole system using the iDrive selector knob or with a stylus. Nature's stylus. Yep, this is a touchscreen. It can be quite a complicated system, which is good if you like technology, but if you don't, then don't worry because there is quite a useful voice control system. Watch this. Hey BMW, I'm cold. Oh, I am raising the temperature and activating your seat heating, so it will be warmer shortly. It's all a bit grown up and sensible though, isn't it? This is supposed to be a BMW M135i, it's supposed to be fun. Hey BMW, I'm bored. I can't imagine that you're bored. Maybe you haven't yet had the chance to try sport mode. Now we're talking. This is a very different car to the previous M135i, but you can definitely still have fun in it. Just being at the controls feels special. You get this big, chunky steering wheel that lets you know you're in control of something substantial. The sports seats are comfortable and supportive and hold you in place without being too firm, while the engine just catapults you down the road. It's running a two litre turbocharged inline four cylinder engine and it feels very strong. It makes so much torque being sent through a Steptronic automatic gearbox. In comfort mode, the gearbox feels silky smooth, but in sport mode, the gear changes are super aggressive. It makes you feel like you're in a proper sports car. Overtaking is very easy, or if you find yourself in a situation where you need to get yourself out of trouble, just hit the gas, bang, gone. It's so quick. It's running BMW's X-Drive all-wheel drive system, but most of the power and torque is being sent through the front wheels. However, if the car thinks you're losing traction or you need a bit more acceleration, it can direct up to 50% of that torque to the rear wheels. It's a big shame that BMW has been so conservative with the distribution of power front to rear. This car lacks the playfulness you'd find in the Ford Focus RS or even the company's own M5, which can switch between all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive on a whim. If you're asking, where's the drift mode, where's the fun, you're not alone. That being said, there is a confidence-inspiring quality of balance to the chassis. You can hustle the M135i quickly, and despite the lack of playfulness at the rear, the front is brilliant. It's easy to place, there's plenty of grip, and even a decent amount of feedback. If there's one thing missing, it's the noise. The engine sounds good and the exhaust still makes the odd pop and bang, but in the cabin it's nearly imperceptible. And that's a real shame because that kind of thing just really helps you feel a little bit more connected to the driving experience. Having said that, this is clearly a damn good car. Is it better than the old M135i? Absolutely, in so many ways. Would I prefer if it was still rear wheel drive? Definitely. But that's my personal preference, and it's a real shame to see the last rear-wheel drive hot hatch disappear. But that's the price you pay for progress. That's the price you pay for a better car. While the new M135i isn't as radical or as fun or as dynamically rewarding as the previous car, it's more capable, more practical, and more usable. It might not be the car most of us want, but it might just be the car most of us need.